All right. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Karen Stone, and I am a real estate broker in New York City. And I uh, wanted to put together a video about how to use Zoom to host social gatherings uh, virtually with social distancing. Um, Zoom is a great tool because it allows people to, um, to connect and host events, whether it is a mastermind if you're in business, or maybe it's a coffee meeting or a happy hour meeting, or a watch party to watch movies with friends, or opportunities to play games with friends. Uh, there are a whole lot of options that one could use Zoom for. And so what I put together was a very simple um, PowerPoint presentation about Zoom um, that I would love to share with you all today. Um, if, you, uh, if you've never used Zoom before, um, then this all might be a little bit um, confusing to you. So I've done the best I can to put together a tool that, uh, that you will um, be able to learn and actually put into play using your computer or your phone. Um, the cool thing about Zoom is that it can be downloaded from either your phone or your computer. Um, so I'm gonna be going over both here in a second. Um, and something that I think will be really helpful um, for all of you is to see those step-by-step -step tools, but then also to go on the Zoom website and really figure out like what, if you have any further questions, there are definitely more advanced um, settings for it. So um, with no further ado, I'm going to share my screen. Sorry, I do have a little bit of a cold. Okay, and now we are sharing. All right, so um, just going to start this. Okay, so there we go. So, um, so Zoom again is a great tool. Um, there are many others. Many, many people have asked me, well, why wouldn't I just use FaceTime? Well, FaceTime, you really can only, it, I think there's only a maximum of two or three people. Um, somebody asked me, well, what about Facebook Live? Facebook Live is very, um, it's only one way. So if I host a Facebook Live or even a YouTube Live or um, live on Instagram, it's only one way. So what's cool about this is the more people you invite, you, everybody can be engaging with each other at the same time. Um, so with no further ado, so Zoom allows for multiple people to be together virtually. You can use your camera on your computer, either the one that's built in, or you can go buy one that you can add, that you can, um, add to your computer, or you can use it um, using your app. And what I didn't mention here is you can also use it just by dialing in. So you don't necessarily have to have a computer or speakers. You could just use your office phone or your cell phone. Um, if you don't have a camera or you don't want to use the app, like I said, you can still use a phone. Um, you can host Zoom parties for up to 100 people on the basic plan. So you could send an invitation out to lots and lots and lots of people there is a capacity for it. So my suggestion is if you know that there will be more than 100 people that you, uh, that you have a few different hosts. Um, also, what's interesting is only one person has to have an account. So it's kind of like sharing a Netflix account where um, once you have the user information, you could either set up your own meeting or if that person, like let's say that I, I have an account, um, then I would be the one to consistently just send out the invitations for the meetings and nobody else needs to actually have an account. They do need to have the app or and the software on their computer, but that's all free. Um, there is a simple invitation that the host sends, which I'll go into. Um, so again, not everybody has to have an account and you could take total control as to um, muting everybody, inviting people and letting them stay anonymous or turning off your camera when needed, which is also great if you're not having a great hair day. <laughs> okay, so basically here, you go to zoom.com, you create an account, the basic account is free. This will get you your own account number, which is specific to you um, and only your account. So once you have the code, this personal meeting ID, which this is my ID, so please just don't copy it, um, then you can use the same number across all meetings that you host. 
So you join from your computer. Um, and this is how you would join a meeting from your computer. So at the top of the screen, you'll see a dashboard. And one of the things you'll see there is join a meeting. You simply click that and you simply can type in the meeting ID number. What this allows you to do is to get into a meeting without needing the link. I know lots of people um, send links via email and they get lost in the mail. Um, and so just having that, that meeting ID number maybe texted, you can certainly um, just include it here or the personal link name. To schedule a meeting, um, again, this would be something you can absolutely do for free. Um, the maximum though, I'll go over it on the next screen, but the maximum is uh, for if you have any more than three people, you can only talk for 40 minutes. Three people or more, 40 minutes maximum. If you have just one-on-one, -on -one, then you can talk an unlimited amount of time. Um, so here is how you would schedule a meeting. Works just like any other meeting invitation. You name the meeting, you talk about what you're gonna do, you put the time and the approximate duration. And then where it says meeting ID, um, you could either consistently use your personal meeting ID number, or you can generate a meeting ID per meeting. So again, this will eliminate people stealing your meeting ID. Um, and it does ask for a meeting, uh, if you want to include a meeting password, unless absolutely necessary. I don't personally care to um, add passwords when I don't need to. Um, and then you can pick whether people can tune in from their phone or from their computer or from both. Now, keep in mind that if you do use Zoom from your phone uh, through the app, it does have, it does sound more like a speaker phone where you can't like turn it off or turn it down. So if you are in a public space and you know that you're gonna need the volume up, I suggest that you just dial in instead of actually tuning in via the phone, via the video feature, which basically, again, unless you have another phone, it, it will ask you if you just wanna use the, um, use the, the audio from your own, um, from your phone. So keep that in mind. Again, I think there are multiple ways that you could do this. If you only have a camera, but you don't have a microphone on your computer, you can tune in on your computer and then call from your phone. If you do call in, you will see kind of a cover shot if you have one, or it'll just say your name and the phone number, or that you're calling in from a phone, but you will still be able to participate in mostly everything. Okay, so this, once you hit save, after we've already scheduled a meeting, this prompt will pop up and it will, this is a very small version of it, but it'll show a summary of everything with the topic, the description, the time, the meeting ID, if a password is required, and the join URL, so you'll see that URL, that's important. And then on the right there, you could copy the invitation. This is important because literally all you have to do is click that, it pops up another screen, which then allows you to basically copy all of that content in there and copy and paste it into an email or into a text message or any other um, device that you might have, which is exactly this. So you can see all the summary of all of everything that you need. So say Zoom, the app isn't working for you and you can only tune in from a phone. You've got all the instructions right there. And again, once you hit copy meeting invitation, it copies all of that and you could just include it in an email. You do not necessarily need to send an email invite for it. Okay, so once you have a meeting um, kind of up and running, um, this is the general screen that will pop up. So once it says join meeting, um, you do, by the way, need to download the software. So there is a program that you do have to download. Um, so this will pop up. Please excuse me in the background. I'm having a morning hair day. Um, so it'll ask you, do you want to join with your computer audio? Most of the time I would say, yes, do this if you have all the technology that you need. But again, if you're like, no, I don't want to join because I don't have it, or I know that it's, it's shoddy, then you then it'll ask you, do, would you rather just join by dialing in? And you can do that as well. But you do need to let the system know or else you'll start to hear feedback because then it'll be recording on both and that's just awkward. Okay, so down at the bottom there, you've got quite a few tools. So starting at the far left, um, you could start and stop the video. So say you are um, walking outside maybe, like maybe you're on your phone. And again, these are the same tools that you have on your app. So you're walking outside and you're bouncing up and down and you don't want people to see this. You just hit the stop video, no big deal. And it'll turn into either your cover shot or your name. 
to the left of that where it says join audio, normally there would be a microphone and this is where you can mute and unmute yourself. As a host, at the host does have the ability to, to mute everybody. Um, so if they're hosting a presentation or something, um, that way you don't hear a lot of feedback. I will say that if you know that you're gonna be taking your phone, let's just say in the car and you have a GPS or you're in your office and you know that there's a lot of people around you and machines and phones ringing, keep it on mute and then only unmute when you absolutely have to. Um, there in the middle, you have manage participants. Um, as you can see, there's only one because it's only me. But as you start to add more people, there are ways that you can see people by clicking that. Uh, you could either see them in a grid. I think the grid has about nine people that you could see on any given page. Um, or you can set it so that you only see the person who's talking, or it could only be on you, or it could be on nothing. Um, to share, which is something that I'm doing right now, I'm sharing my screen, which I will go into um, and on the next uh, screen. And then up there on the right, you do have end meeting. Something that I'm not showing here that also uh, through some of these arrows and where it says more is the ability to chat. Um, so that is a sidebar on the side of the meeting window where you can type. So say you wanna reference something, um, you can type it right into the chat. That way everybody in the meeting can pull from that. Um, most of these are not connected to anything else like Facebook or anything. So it was kind of weird to post the random link. You could post the link right there or a photo or you know, you could message people back and forth. Say you wanna have a conversation offline, um, you can, that you could keep that private as well, but all within that chat. There's also a hand raising feature. So for Q and A, so if you are hosting a meeting and you just want to allow participants to raise their hand and then you call on them and you unmute them, only you have that option as well. So here is where you could share your screen. Again, I'm sorry um, for my morning hair, but you can either share the screen there at the top where, where you can share all tabs, so access to everything. So if you've got emails popping up, if you know that you're gonna be going between screen and screen and screen, uh, or you know, tab and um, different software, I would definitely recommend sharing the whole screen unless just like this presentation where I know I only want you to see this PowerPoint presentation, for instance. Okay, so you can pick that as well. Keep in mind though that say that you're on a web, a web page and you're only sharing like um, here where I have Zoom like launch meeting, like that's, that's obviously Chrome. If there are any pop-ups, the pop-ups will not show. So keep that in mind. So that's why you can, you, and you can always toggle back and forth and only share the screen. Okay, now we're in our phone, we're in the app. So um, if you do have an account, again, the account is free, the, the screen all the way there on the left, that's what you will see when you initially sign in. So you'll be able to start a new meeting, you could join a meeting, schedule and screen share. So a lot of the same stuff. I scheduled um, a fake meeting a few screens ago. Um, and so that's the one that you see there where it says name of meeting goes here. I literally type that in. So that was the name of the meeting. Um, the next one is join a meeting. So again, if you know the meeting ID number, this might be something if you know that it's a repetitive kind of thing or somebody texts you that ID number, you can simply just paste it into there and it will allow you to join straight from there. Um, you can also schedule a meeting. So this is helpful um, if you work remotely a lot. Um, the few things to note here though that I circled are the option to use your personal meeting ID. So if you have that off, then basically, um, uh, sorry, then basically you will um, get different IDs for everything, but if it's enabled, then any meeting options that you change here will be applied to all meetings that use your personal meeting ID. Um, and then of course the option to require a meeting password. Again, if, if it's small, if it's a, just a small group of people that you know, and you're only sending it to them, then I don't see a reason why they should need a password, but use your discretion. Okay, then um, once you do join, again, you will have the option to call using the internet audio, which is the internet, like your phone audio versus dialing in. Again, if you plan to use your phone camera, but you will need to be in front of a computer to see certain things, and then you know that neither of them have the right speaker, 
then you can always dial in. So my suggestion is, unless you're in that kind of situation, just use the internet audio, which basically means you're gonna be using the audio on your device. Um, for safe driving mode, they don't want you toggling back and forth a lot, so they've made it very simple for you to just touch the screen, tap to speak, and then pull your finger off, and then you're on mute. Um, and then the screen all the way on the right shows your mute options, your start and stop video. You can see the participants, again, by clicking on that. As you start to add more participants, you will see them, I think, two or three on a screen, so you might have to um, have to just swipe a lot to see the different people on the call. Um, I, I know I do this a lot when I have like 10 people on the call. Sometimes I just want to like see that somebody's there or see who's there. Um, that's what I often do from my phone. And again, you do have the option to share your content as well and set up a chat and things like that. And that is it. So um, there are lots of options, um, ideas that I have for using Zoom. Um, some of them will include um, hosting like a virtual book club, um, hosting game nights virtually. Uh, I would definitely probably do that on a computer, share the screen of the game. Um, maybe you're playing an, a game online and uh, you want everybody, everybody I guess would minimize their screen for Zoom and maximize the screen of the game. And then in real time, if again, if that person who's hosting it shares their screen, you'll be able to see in real time who's playing what. Um, again, book clubs. Um, for people who are hosting masterminds, if you wanna have coffee dates, this is a great tool. It also records, so if you have consultations, you could record it and send the recording to people. There's lots and lots of different tools and ways that you could use this. Um, you can use it for your community. If you're going to have meetings, if you can't go out, this is also a great way to eliminate people um, having to be near each other. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them here, and we will see you right back here um, with some more videos. So keep an eye out for more stuff that we've got going on. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.